Jamie Ruby from Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to me today. I appreciate it. I very much enjoyed the series. I binged it all yesterday. So. <laughs> Hi, so, Jamie. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice Thank to meet you. you too. So what was it originally that drew you to the project and made you want to do it? Well, Appian Way sent me the scripts and I love Silka Louise's writing and Elizabeth Moss was attached to it. And so this is a, a very powerful combination. And I love the genre bending quality of the story. And I always feel it's fun to take on things I haven't done before that I find challenging that are a little bit scary. And uh, it had all those factors involved. And so I was very fortunate to say yes. And also it was Apple TV Plus that was making it who I love working with. Okay, great. Um, obviously there's a lot of different, um, let's say time periods and versions of everything going on. Was it hard to keep them straight? And how did you kind of go about doing that? Well, we had to work really hard at ourselves, understanding where we are, what we're doing and what the transitions are from one thing to the other, which is really important. Mm -hmm. However, I would say that in the first two episodes, we wanted it to be confusing. We wanted it to be ambiguous because her life is constantly shifting mm -hmm. and it's unbalancing. And we want you to experience this show mostly through the eye of, of the character of Kirby. So it's very subjective from her point of view and her life is unbalanced. It's shifting, it's constantly changing. And so the ambiguity we hope it interests and excites audience and they try, they find it a mystery and try to figure out what, what is not only going on in the show as in who killed these women, but also what's going on in her mind. All right, right, definitely interesting in that way. So other than that though, what did you find kind of the most difficult bringing it to life? Um, well, it's, it is, uh, I think the time shifts in, in figuring out, because they are uh, a metaphor for the aftermath of trauma. So I wanted them to be really real and grounded and not too fantastical. And so we started out with in them in a very simplistic way. And then as they grow, uh, they, get, they evolve and they get bigger and bigger. But we really took a very editorial approach to them. There's a, not a lot of CG involved. Obviously, right. later as they get bigger, they, there is. But we wanted it to be feel very, very real to the audience. Okay. Was there any, um, either another director or just a style maybe that kind of influenced the way that you did direct it? Absolutely. There's a few I drew on from uh, Michael Mann's The Insider because of the voyeuristic quality that I wanted. Uh, Fincher's Seven and, and Zodiac, All the President's Men, um, Silence of the Lambs, The Lobster. I mean, these are all very different genres that we brought in to, together in this. Okay. Do you have like a favorite scene that you can kind of tease that you directed without <laughs> spoiling it too much? Oh boy. Uh, okay. I would say that one of my favorite is actually a very simple scene between Dan and Kirby in a restaurant. And it's a really real, a very real moment between two people uh, that are just being honest and taking a leap of faith and taking a big risk and telling the truth. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And like I said, I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day.